good? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. So this is the first Coming year. to the spot, yep. Yeah, Coming man. To the spot. Wow, look at this place. It's beautiful. I'm assuming this is the half bath? Yeah, that's the half bath right there. The black backsplash is new, but I like it. Like, I haven't seen too many people do that, but I like that with, with the obsidian grain. It's just, this is, this is a beautiful kitchen, and it's, and it's big with an with eating space, man. I was thinking about doing white originally, Yeah. but when I started looking, I was like, man, we got white walls, white ceilings, yeah. we got white cabinets. Yeah. So, and then, you know, I knew I was doing the black countertops. Yep. So I was like, you know, we can kind of offset it again yep. with the black backsplash. So that's what I went with, and I mean, I definitely like it a lot. I definitely. We just, we obviously put down a new LVP to this whole house. Yeah. Um, we painted the fireplace black. Yeah. And um, obviously added this new light fixture. Again, you guys will see as we go around, but the bathroom was actually about three feet higher originally. Yeah. So we actually dropped it. And that way this could be like the master bath. Overseas and like keep playing or uh, whatever. He was cool with it, but like at the same time, like he understood like this part of it. He used to do like windows as well. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess part of what we talk about is your pops, like how he's inspired you as well. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so so happy happy Father's Day. You might see this a long time time away, but happy Father's Day to 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 Mr. Dalton's uh, Albanese. Uh, yeah. Is that say last name right? Albanese. Yeah. Albanese. Yeah. yeah. Albanese. Happy Father's Day to Mr. Albanese. You know what I'm saying? Um, so so tell me more about that, man. Tell me about about your dad. Tell me about how he inspired you, man. Uh, I mean. He had me in the gym as soon as I could walk. Yeah. So that's that part of with the basketball. I mean, I was just always around his team, whoever he was coaching. He coached a few different high schools, so I was just constantly in the gym, you know. Yeah. And I was always like a ball boy for him when I was like day tall. Yeah. And then, uh, so I mean, just constantly in the gym with me, rebounding, you know, kind of just like teaching me some different things. And then I just kind of ran with it. I just kind of fell in love with it. and. Uh, and I ended up playing at a university and then had an opportunity to go overseas. And he also did this when I was younger as well. He rented houses. And um, I mean, I never expected when I was young. I, I, you know, I could go in and help him paint. And I'm like, man, I, I don't want to do this. Yeah. But, but like, you know, once I got in, once I got out of college and everything, I was like, started learning about this. I was like, oh, yeah, this is what I want to do. So once I got back from uh, Europe, I really like hopped into this. and you know, kind of here, so. That's awesome, man. So, I mean, it seems to me like, just like me, like, you, you want to be like your dad when you grew up. That's kind of how I felt, like, I mean, my dad, even to this day, is still my hero. Like, I just want to be just like my pops. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. It sounded to me like you kind of following his footsteps. You might be a basketball coach one day? Uh, I, I, that's what I originally wanted to do. I wanted to uh, be a college coach. Yeah. But, um, just, you know, just ended up going this route. Um, yeah. I wouldn't ever rule it out, though. I might. Exactly. You know, I might end up going back one eventually and getting on like a university staff and kind of working my way out. But Absolutely, and like you said, I, I don't know really anything out because I mean, like you said, like you could have 10, 20, 30, 40 rooms, bro, and just be a just be a, co a college coach inspiring other young men like to do something with their lives. You know what I mean? Because that's the thing. Like another, I think another impactful man in my life was my wrestling coach, right in high school, Coach Billy. And uh, really, I mean, there were some quotes he taught me. You know, those who seek great deeds will not suffer greatly. And if you don't, uh, if you're not seeking what you actually want, then you're not going to get it. And so there was just like you said, there's these important men, man. So, so man, this is your first flip ever, man. Yep. So, I mean, of course, we're going to go through and do the tour and everything like that. But uh, talk to me, man. What, what's been what's been like some challenges and some victories in, in, in this situation and in this project? Uh, challenges, definitely. Um, my first contractor. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it didn't go well, yeah. and um, it taught me a lot. I mean, there's, I could, I could, we could be on here for hours talking about what I learned about it. Um, yeah. But victories, I mean, it just taught me the details, like the really fine details of what goes into a flip. Yeah. Because you know, at first I was kind of letting them handle going to this, uh, going to Home Depot, going to Menards, Lowe's, wherever, yep. to pick up the materials. Yep. Well, when that fell through, yep. I started going. Yep. So now I can tell you in detail what things cost. Yep. Like I had a general idea. Yep. 
but now I can almost tell you down to like a penny yep. what things cost, which is gonna help me in my next flips. It definitely will. So you kind of, so at first you kind of thought like, hey, look, you know what? I'm gonna let you handle this because you're an expert, so I'm gonna do this. But I think you learned just like I did, like with contractors, there's a lot of babysitting. Yeah. I mean, in no disrespect to any contractor out there, it's just simply the fact that, you know, uh, they got a lot of projects going on or a lot of personal life situations going on. And you kind of have to remind them, hey, I need you on this job. I need you to do this. I, what do you, did you get this? They're wasting hours at the store. So I totally agree with that. So, um, uh, you know, like we said before, man, we're going to not put this video out until I, months later. So yeah. um, so what was that happened with your contractor? What, what was the situation that went down for the viewers out there? Um, I mean, it started out good. Yeah. You know, like I was only coming by once a week. Like every Saturday or Sunday, I would just come to kind of see what had happened that week yeah and um i don't really know there wasn't like a specific date that it was like things just changed but gradually you could just kind of see everything going downhill yeah and you know so i started coming around more like four times a week and they didn't like that yeah because you know now they feel like i'm babysitting them well you know if you're not doing what you're supposed to do i gotta babysit you at that point absolutely um so things just kind of started going downhill like i said and one thing led to another they kept on saying that they didn't have enough money and it was like looking pulling money out of you yeah. yeah and it's like it's like that doesn't even make sense because yeah. i've got a lender so you know the money's there you know you gave me the scope of work at the beginning yep before we even started when we signed the, the contractor agreement all of that yeah you know so the fact that you're saying you don't have enough money that doesn't make any sense to me absolutely so you know, I started basically just kind of calling them out on those things, and that's when it really started to go downhill quicker. Yep. Because they don't like when you, you know, most people don't like when you call them out. Yeah. Especially, you know, especially if they're in the wrong, they don't want to, you know, they're trying to push it off on you. Yeah. They don't, they don't want to take that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, then finally they, you know, we kind of mended things and tried to get to the end, and they told me we were a week away from being finished. At the beginning of April, mm -hmm. and like two days before it was supposed to be done, they were like, "Oh, we need another seventeen thousand dollars," and I was like, "No," mm -hmm. I was like, "Like you have literally, I had it down to the penny. It was like nine hundred and sixteen dollars and seventy-seven cents." Wow! I was man. like, "I was like, you have that much money to, to finish, finish this job." Yeah. And keep in mind, none of the countertops were in. None yeah. of the appliances were in. Yeah. Um, toilets weren't in, backsplash wasn't in. I mean, basically all the like finishing yes. finishes of the house weren't in. Yeah. So I'm looking around like, hold on a second. You're saying we're saying we're two days away from being done. Yeah. And I mean, again, I didn't know exact numbers of them, but I was like, you know, I know appliances are around three k. Yeah. If you're gonna get stainless steel nice appliances most of the time, right yeah. around that number. Yeah. And I'm like. Well, you got nine hundred sixteen dollars to buy appliances, to buy count, to buy granite countertops, to buy backsplash. I mean, they walk it off. Yeah. Yeah, they won't walk off. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what, basically before I left, I was like, "Are we good?" Because I was like, "I'm not giving you any more money." And they were like, "Yeah, we're good." Well, then they basically texted me after and was, you know, like basically asking me for a donation to help finish it. A donation. Yeah, I mean, and not literally a donation, yeah. but you know what I mean. Like, right. it was basically like, a, hey, are you going to help us out? Yeah. And it was like... Because we mismanaged. Yeah. Yep. And I was like, I mean, long text. And mm -hmm. they were like, at the end, they were like, I just need a simple yes or no. And I just said no. So then, you know, they tried to like, they were like, hey, can you send me the contract that we signed? You know, I think they were trying to figure their way out of it. And, yep. Um, they didn't see the way out. And they were basically trying to get me to fire them the whole time. Yep. But one thing that I have learned is when you get into this, before you get into a flip, have an attorney on your team already. Okay. Because if you have questions about anything, you don't want to be scrambling to try to find an attorney that has time. Yes. You know, I, I made a phone call to an attorney a year ago mm -hmm. and um, he's been my attorney ever since. Yeah. And so it was nice because we already had that relationship. Yep. So when I called him, I was like, hey, I've got the situation. It was like, okay, Dalton, like, here's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Whereas like a- Brand new relationship. Yeah, it was like, it was like so what, what was your name again? Yep. You know, we just met five minutes ago. You yep. Know? So it's 
that's one thing I definitely learned was you want to have an attorney on your team before you get into it fully. So what made you, did your dad tell you that advice or what made you already pursue a relationship with an attorney ahead of time like that? Um, honestly, going to Corey. Oh, come on. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to Corey. Thank yeah. you. Yep. Love Corey. Yeah, I, w I was part of Corey for, I mean, I've been a part of Corey for almost three years now. Yeah. So, I mean, I was learning about this for, I didn't buy a flip for a year and nine months. Yes. Yeah. It took me a year and nine months to buy my first flip. Yeah. Um, I looked through a lot of houses. It's mm -hmm. just, I wanted to find the right one that yeah. made sense numbers wise. Yeah. Um, and this one definitely did. Now other things happened, but. So what, 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 when you bought this house or even saw it, what were the numbers on this house? Um, well, it was originally a three bed, one bath. Mm -hmm. And when I ran the comps, um, it was gonna comp out around like 200, 210. Yeah, it's about right. So I, I saw, you know, if we add a full bath and we add a half bath to this, you know, my comps go up 40, 50K. Absolutely. Right there. So that made sense, mm -hmm. especially money wise. Mm -hmm. You know, how much how much does it cost to add a full bath versus yep. how much are you gonna make back? And it made sense that way. Yep. So um, that's why I added the full bath and the half bath. Mm -hmm. So I bought this. It was 108, uh -huh. and the original budget was 82.5 with my contractor. Understood. So, and then I actually ran my um, ARV, my numbers, super low. I, gotcha. Yeah, I put it at 250. Yep. So I was like, there's no, like, it would definitely sell for 250. Oh, yeah. Um, so that actually kind of saved me through this whole process. Yep. You know, I had to dump in some of my own personal money into yep. getting this finished. Yep. Well, because my ARV is now higher than 250. Yep. It saved me from a bad contractor, essentially. Yeah. So, so what you're saying, so many words, is that contractor went south. That situation went south. He had to spend extra money getting a new contractor, which cost him considerably more money, and then therefore was going to lose money in the project. But the value in the area went up. As well as and something else you said that's super key here about flipping that I personally learned the hard way was that you need to have extra money set aside because you almost always go over budget. Yeah, almost yeah. always. I mean, stuff pops up, especially in rehabs. I haven't personally built a new built house yet, but talking to my contractor uh, that's built plenty of new built homes, he says new builds is not as many surprises besides the cost of lumber going up. But um, yeah, I definitely understand that, man. So. Uh, so when it's all said and done, I know right now you're in a stage where uh, we're about to do some showings, about to do an open house, but this thing's about to go on contract because the Columbus market's hot. How much do you think you're gonna make in this deal? Um, with after the contractor stuff, mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping I'm gonna still make about fifteen to eighteen k. That's great. That's great. Now, how much do did you? For, what was the perspective amount? Um, well, when I ran my numbers on two fifty. It was right around 30. 30, good. But because I now have it listed for 289.9, if I sell it for 289.9, you know, I could have I could have potentially made 50K. Understood, so. understood. So, so we'll say 30K perspective, maybe 15, 18 now, we're gonna see at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, like, as long as you make money, that's what's important. Yep. I mean, bro, I've been in the game almost nine years, in the nine years now, I, I see plenty of people lose money or even um, just break even and quit. If you make money, then that means that this is for you. You yep. see what I'm saying? So, and, and again, just because people lose money doesn't mean this isn't for them. Like I've seen people lose money and keep going. Yep. Like my first deal, I made money on. My second and third deal, I lost money on. But I kept going. You right. see what I'm saying? So I think these challenges you had has been good because now you know how to judge people's character a little harder mm -hmm. on the contracting side. And I think right now that's one of the biggest places that people kind of get played or don't realize that to be a great flipper, you have to have a good contractor. To be a great landlord, you have to have good tenants. And those are two things where you have to learn those skill sets. So with that being said, man, uh, go ahead and let's, let's do a tour, man. Take us, take us all around the house. Tell us what you did and uh, we'll kind of go from there. All right, cool. Go ahead. Let's yeah. go right there. Let's go. Whole new full bath right here. Yeah, I love adding baths. This is key to everything. Appreciate you having me over, though. I appreciate you guys coming by and everything. It was it was super cool. Absolutely, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And man, more for, I look forward to your success, man. Yeah. Because I mean, bro, the sky's really the limit, bro. I can hear the passion and you speaking. We're in the house about how you care about these little details. 
And to me, you're the type of person that needs to be flipping houses because you do care. I got people I know, people I work with that mainly just care about the bag. And I be trying to explain to people like that only lasts so long. I mean, I've been, I was, I've been in the business since the recession. So, I mean, I've seen things come and go. And so, I mean, you know, you'll still keep doing flips because people need good housing. Even if you're not making as much money, but still making a profit. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, more exactly. well, power to you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Appreciate that. You ready to go, man?